What's up, West Side students? How we doing? It is good to see you all. Yeah, thank you. Uh, listen, you guys need to give it up for Cassie. She's really awesome. It's so good to be with you guys. If we haven't met, my name's JJ. Yeah, hey, yeah, where's my, yeah, give it. Listen, cooking with Cassie is gonna win an Emmy. We're gonna enter it in. You guys just don't know it yet. Um, it's happening. Um, but we're so excited you're here. Um, we're excited that we got Speedway in the house with us tonight. Uh, love you guys. It's good to have you here. Um, come on, give, give it up for Speedway being here with us tonight. It's great. Come on. Um, but in all seriousness, we have something to celebrate tonight. Um, and, and here's the reason why we need to celebrate. Um, because 43 people last week gave their life to Jesus. Can we have some celebration happening in this place tonight? And, and, and here's, here's the thing. It's not because of anything we did. It's because of what you did. It's because that you guys took it serious and said, you know what, that one person that, that I need to go after, I'm gonna go after. And you invited people, you told people about Jesus. Some of you, um, for the very first time, you've been coming for a bit and then you gave your life to Christ. And so we are so excited because that's what we, we exist here as a church to reach people that are far from God. And we're gonna continue to go after the lost, last and least of these. All right, you got your Bibles tonight? Um, okay, listen, if you don't have the Bible, like a physical Bible, I get it, like, all right? Like, I know that some of you don't like to actually have physical Bible, but if you don't have it on your phone, like, delete something, like, probably delete TikTok or Snapchat or something like that and download the Bible, and um, we're gonna be in Ephesians chapter one tonight, and as you're getting to Ephesians chapter one, let me just kind of set the scene about the book of Ephesians, because here's what I love um, about Ephesians. The book of Ephesians is broken into two parts. The first part is all about helping us understand our identity of who we are in Christ, and the second part of the book of Ephesians is all about how our identity affects how we live or how it should affect how we live. So the first part's all theology, and the second part is all application. We're gonna apply it to our lives. And so in Ephesians chapter one, I'm gonna start in verse three, and we're gonna read a lot of verses tonight. If you're ready, say I'm ready. Okay, I don't believe you. If, you say, if you're ready, say I'm ready. I'm ready, like SpongeBob, right? I'm just joking, that was dumb. All right, sorry, I'm 35. Uh, praise be to God, verse three. Praise be to God and the Father and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined, don't, don't get tripped about predestined, us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ." to be put into full effect when the time reaches their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him, we are also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, when you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promise, promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possessions to the praise of his glory. So tonight, we're kicking off a brand new series called Note to Self. This entire series is all about your identity, and more specifically, your identity in Christ. And so this is like the one, the one phrase that we see in Ephesians chapter one is this idea of being in Christ. And so what I wanna talk to us about tonight is what does it mean for us to be in Christ? And how does that affect us? But before we do, would you just take a moment and pray with me? God, I'm so thankful, Lord, for your word. God, I'm thankful, and I ask God that um, you would just speak to our hearts right now. God, I already know that you're working in us. God, you're already working through us and you're gonna work beyond us. But God, I'm just asking in this moment that maybe we would grasp what you're saying to us in your word. 
May we would grasp this because, God, I believe that it changes everything when we understand who we are in you. And so, God, I just pray in these next few minutes, God, that, that we would listen, that we would take notes, because if we take notes, God, I know that the Kansas City Chiefs will win tomorrow night. Amen. All right, like, there we go. All right, like, there you go. If you don't take notes, we're not winning. That's on you. Patrick Mahomes is going to be throwing TDs and stuff like that. All right, uh, quick question. Show of hands. How many of you have a be real? Be real. All right, thank you. I actually, um, huh, you always react to mine? Well, I have forgot to post mine, so I'm gonna post late from yesterday. So I'd love, who wants to be in my be real real quick? Here, yeah, get right here, here we go. What's up, be real? Don't worry, I'll tell you in just a second. All right, there we go, all right. I just, listen, I'm sorry. Now you guys can go like it and everything like that. Um, let me be real about be real for a second, huh? Uh, JJ Lane 15, everything's JJ Lane 15. Yeah, if you really wanna know, it's, I know, I'm such a dork. It's like, what's your basketball number, 15? Okay, just throw it at the end of your name, all right? That's, that's what I did, all right? Um, so let me be real about be real for a second. Um, back in July, I don't know if you guys remember this or not, but in July, we had this thing called Christmas in July. And for some reason, I was, con- actually, I just did it on my own uh, volition. I found a Rudolph the Reindeer, um, costume and I decided to wear it on uh, the Christmas in July. I actually think we have a picture of this. All right, and, and literally, like, that's it, right? I cannot see, I could not see out of that uh, costume. But what I noticed is, like, there is, like, this group of people that were super excited and they're pulling out their phones and they're taking pictures. And I know some of them ended up on Instagram. Some of them were on your B Reels and stuff like that. And so um, I didn't know what was happening. I was like, this is crazy. You guys are being crazy. So the next day I asked the, one of the only Gen Z people that I know that's an adult, and that's Estrella. I said, Estrella, what was happening last night? And um, don't judge me, I'm 35 years old. I can't keep up with you guys, all right? Like, eh. I asked her, I was like, what, what in the world was happening? She's like, they were posting on Be Real. And I was like, what's Be Real? And so she, I know, like, right? I was like, it's like, what's MySpace? You don't know what MySpace is. I know what MySpace is. Welcome to my world for a second, all right? But like, you guys were like, I don't, I don't, she's like, here's what Be Real is all about. They, they send you a, a notification every single day and you're supposed to post and it's supposed to be like whatever um, you're posting about. So I was like, that's dumb. Like, I'm sorry, like, I love you guys. Like, I was like, that's stupid. And I was like, I'm not getting it. I'm, I'm not bashing you guys. Like, don't worry, I have a be real now. Because on August 20th, do you have one? Okay, I'm just not stupid anymore. I think it's cool. I gotta be real. And, and I, my first one, I, we don't have a picture of this, but like, I, I just had this, I don't know, this dream in my mind that this social media app was gonna be just a little bit different. And so my first time it popped through, I was like, yay, and I was about to plug my phone in because I was going to bed at eight o'clock. Um, and so like I pulled out my phone and took a picture of um, all these cords and I went to bed. And then the next day I got on it and I was like, hold on a second, like there's some people and they're posing. I didn't think this was supposed to happen on Be Real. Because I, like, I felt duped in the moment. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Why in the world are they, they posing? I thought it was just supposed to be whatever. Um, and I'm like posting like my triple chin on there like every so often and like it just looks so stupid. And, and now I pose because I'm like, okay, all the cool kids pose, I gotta pose, all right? Um, but here's what I love about Be Real is there's this notification that pops in and it says it's time to be real. You guys ever, you've ever, you've seen that if you have Be Real, right? It's time to be real. And I think if there's a message that we need to hear in today's time, it's that message right there. It's time to be real. Because here's the reality that, that every single person in this place is, is searching for something. And, and here's what you're searching for. We're all searching for who we really are. But the problem with that is that we will never fully understand who we are until we understand whose we are. So when we get to Ephesians chapter one, Paul is reminding us of who we are and whose we are, and he uses this phrase over and over and over again. It says, in Christ, which is such a powerful statement and something that we don't like think about too often. And he gives us actually three things that really shape our identity and who we are and what it means for us to be in Christ. First thing he says, he says, in Christ, we're chosen. 
And what does it mean to be chosen? And if I get like maybe even more specific for just a second, what Paul says is that we are chosen before God created anything in this world. Now, we just sometimes need to pause and think about things that we read because this is what I, I was having to do this week. I was like, hold on a second. Like, like God, you, you chose me to be your son before you created the stars, before you created the moon, before you even created heaven, you decided that you were going to choose me. So let that sink in for a second. Like that sunset that we're gonna see maybe tonight when we go home, really pretty, really beautiful, really awesome and everything like that, before God even thought about that, he said, I choose you. And here's, here's why that matters so much. That matters so much because one of the things that we do in our world today is, is we are trying to, to get people to accept who we are, trying to get people to choose us. And so what we do is, is like some of us, we change our hair, we change the way we chalk, we, we change everything about us so that someone will choose us. And what this is reminding us is this, is that we don't have to live for the approval. We don't have to live to be chosen. We are already chosen by the God of this universe who created everything. And before he created everything, he says to us, I choose you. And that's big because not only does he choose, like he, and when he says he chooses you, he chooses all of you. He chooses your quirks, he chooses your insecurities, he chooses your weaknesses, he chooses your strengths, he chooses everything about you, those things that you don't like about yourself. God says, no, I chose you, I choose you. That's powerful when we stop and we actually think about the fact that God picked us and he chose us and we know that he chose us because Paul reminds us that not only in Christ are we chosen, but we are adopted. I don't know what you know about adoption, but let me tell you this. Adoption's a choice. And, and, and I've never had the opportunity or felt like that's what God has led me to, but some of the things I've, I've learned this week about adoption is this, is that before you adopt someone, the adoption, adoption agency or someone like that, they're gonna sit down with you and they're going to make sure that you understand all the risks like, so they're gonna make sure, like, hey, like, this kid could have something wrong with his heart. This kid could uh, eventually, like, say, hey, you know what, forget this. You're like, you adopted me, but I don't want anything to do with you and leave. This kid could um, have, like, this anger issue or a behavior issue, and they want you to understand all of the risk before you adopt someone. God understood every single risk that he had when he chose us to adopt us. He understood that some of you right now in your hearts, you're far away from him, but he still says, no, you're my son, you're my daughter. He knew that some of you maybe wanted this day, you're gonna walk away from him and say, I don't want anything to do with you, God. But still, he, he said, I don't, I, the risk is worth the reward, and the reward is you, so I'm going to adopt him as my son or my, my daughter. He understood the risk, and he made the choice. He continues to make the choice, and he will make the choice forever to call you his son or daughter. In Christ, you are adopted, and there's nothing that you've done, there's nothing that you're doing, and there's nothing that you will do that God's not gonna look at you and say to you right now in this place that you are my son and you are my daughter. And the reason why I can say that with certainty tonight is simply this, is that for God to forsake you, for God to adopt you and then say, I want nothing to do with you, would go against the character of God. And not only would it go against the character of God, if God said that or did that, he would not be God. And if he's not God, then there is no God and we should just pack it up and go home. So there's a lot riding on this adoption thing. So there's nothing you've done that God doesn't look at you and say, you're my son, you're my daughter. And again, I also know this because I understand a little bit about the Jewish culture during that time, which I wanna share with you because it's actually really powerful once you understand it. 
Because in that time, if you adopted someone, they were written in the will of your family forever. And again, there wasn't anything you could do for them to, be like you couldn't cuss them out enough. You couldn't treat them poorly enough. You couldn't disobey enough for them to say, "Uh uh-uh, you're out, let me erase you from my family and kick you out if you were adopted during that time. Now, on the flip side, if, if you were the person's actual physical blood and flesh of the family and you did those things, they had every right to kick you out, to get rid of you, to do really whatever they wanted to do. And my friends, if this is not the gospel, this is the gospel right here. This is what God did to Jesus. He sent Jesus to this earth to be forsaken so that we could become written into his will forever so that we could be his sons and daughters. And we have what he says here is we have an inheritance in Christ. We have been blessed in every single way in Christ. We are his sons and daughters and there's blessings that come with it. So don't let anyone tell you that you're just this or that. No, you're a princess of the Lord, of the heavens, of the heavens and earth. Like, you don't let anyone look down on you and say, man, I can't believe you made that decision. That's okay because my dad's a king. There's nothing you've done. Because in order for God to adopt you, he had to forsake his son. And his son bled and he died on a cross for you. And when you put your faith into Jesus, what that means is that he has forgiven you. Completely. So in Christ, the last thing is this, is that you're forgiven completely. This is the one that I needed for so long. Because like I would, I would be following God and I'd be doing good and the next thing I'd mess up. Or, or I, I could be walking down the road and all of a sudden the enemy could be like, hey, <laughs> You remember what you did like back when you were 17? It took me a very long time to understand that in Christ, I'm forgiven completely. Again, past, present, future sins, you've all been paid for on the cross. If you have a relationship with Jesus, you're forgiven. So your past doesn't define you, your present doesn't define you, and your future doesn't define you. What defines you is what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross. But there's so many of us right now that, that are in, in here today. Man, you don't believe that. You don't believe that, that there's, that you, you believe that like the thing that you did last night or the thing that you did six months ago or the thing that you're gonna do three months from now that has more power than what Christ did for you on the cross. But there's nothing that you've done that has more power than that. And I promise you, I'm gonna continue to preach that message so many times because you need to get that because I needed to get it and I still sometimes need to get it. So in Christ, you're chosen. In Christ, you're adopted. In Christ, you are forgiven. And can I be real with you? I, I, I need, I need, I need, I need that. I need that reminder. I needed that reminder this morning. I need that reminder tomorrow. I need that reminder the next day and the next day after that. I need this reminder. And, and, and my guess is that you do too. In fact, I, I would actually just say this today with as full confidence as I could say it. that the identity that you need and the thing that you need and the thing that you're looking for in this world is found in Jesus. So stop letting the world tell you who you are and start letting the I am remind you of who you are. And he says that you're my son, you're my daughter, you're my son, you're my daughter, I've adopted you, I've chosen you, I've forgiven you completely. Let that be the message that shows up every single day. Because here's what I see so much in in your lives is a lot of you are walking around like this. 
But when you understand who you are in Christ, what happens is you can't look down because God is the lifter of your head. And what he does is he lifts your head up and you're able to walk with a strut, not because of anything you did, but because of what he did. Yo, I'm tired of of watching you guys look defeated every week that you come in here or seeing you out at school and seeing you look defeated. You're not defeated in Christ. You have victory. And you don't have to walk down looking like this anymore and being ashamed of what you did because the God of this universe, look up, look up at what I did for you on the cross and keep looking up because I prepared a place for you. You need this reminder. I need this reminder. So here's here's what we've done. In, In your communities tonight, I'm gonna give you something that looks like this. This is mine. I tore it off because it had a really tall piece. But it says, in Christ, I am chosen. I'm adopted. I'm forgiven. You're gonna receive this, and here's why you're receiving this tonight. Because I wish that I had an app that I could get on your phone every single day and text you and say, hey, by the way, here's who you are in Christ, but I can't. I'm not that wealthy and I'm not that good. But what I do have is I have a printer that I can give you a piece of paper. And you're gonna have to make the decision to do with what you want. But I'm gonna challenge you to take this right here. I'm gonna challenge you. Because some of you don't believe it and I see it in your faces right now. And place it somewhere, it could be maybe on your mirror, it could be somewhere in your car, or maybe you wanna set an alarm on your phone that simply says, hey, you know what, at 320 every single day, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have this reminder that in Christ I'm chosen, I'm adopted, I'm forgiven. And, and here's what I want you to do with this. I'm, again, I'm not, I'm not gonna be able to tell you to do this tomorrow, but you're gonna have to do it on your own volition. I want you to read it out loud. Yeah, out loud. Because there's something powerful when I read something out loud. And I wanna challenge you to do it tomorrow, the next day, and keep going on. Until when? Until you believe it. Until you stop walking with your head down and you start believing, like, you know what? (laughs) I'm blessed. Why am I blessed? Because in Christ, this is who I am. And then when you believe it, keep reading it because there's a world out there that wants to steal that away from you. So I just wanna challenge you to do something. Listen, I I realize you can do it, you cannot do it, but here's, could you just imagine what would happen if you did? I can. The thing I can see is I can see some of those things that you're running to, the thing that you're gonna wanna run to, that website tonight that you wanna go to. When you understand who you are in Christ and you understand that you have everything, that website is gonna become meaningless. When you get your Bible out in the morning, it's not gonna seem like a daunting task because in Christ, even if I don't read this, I am completely this, these things. I'm, I'm forgiven, I'm loved, I'm his son, I'm his daughter. And so what's gonna happen is you're gonna be like, hold on a second, I want to now. I don't feel like I have to. What will happen is is that you will begin to realize that there's a lot of people in this world that are walking down with their heads down. And you can say, hey, can I tell you how to get your head up? Let me tell you about Jesus. In fact, maybe you're here today and you're hearing me talk about being in Christ and you're like, bro, I don't even know how to be in Christ. Well, let me, let me tell you how you can be in Christ. God, I want in. That's it. It's as simple as, God, I want in. And he'll, he'll say, you really want in? Yeah, I want in, God. And then come follow me. And you begin to follow him and you become in Christ. It's that simple. But yet so powerful. Because some of you, your journey doesn't start here. Your journey starts right now in this moment of saying, I'm I'm ready to be in Christ. So would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me real quick? I don't know, maybe just maybe that's someone here today, if you're just really honest, 
and you would say, hey, I'm, I'm not in Christ, but I want in. If that's you and you say, hey, today I wanna be in, I wanna be in God's family, would you just raise your hand where you're at? I don't wanna be in. See your hands. I'm gonna invite us all to take, to, to say this prayer out loud together. So you just repeat after me. Dear God, I want in. I want to follow you. Come and be my Savior. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to invite you to stand up now and um, come and worship with us.